Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spellweaver. My name is Boltor, and today we're going to be taking a look at every single budget deck that I collected over the past stone oh, two, three weeks. Um, a little while ago I started an initiative for everyone in the community to throw together a budget deck. And by budget I mean um, no epics, very few rares, mostly commons and uncommons. Decks that would be easy for people with without crafting or people who are just unlocking crafting to be able to make and play and have you know some general success with a number of these are mono aspect which means that is if you have the um if you have a couple packs and you have a um you have the starter deck you're probably able to build the that deck some of them are dual um aspect which means you got to be a little further down the line to use them but still, these decks were primarily designed to face off against the AI and the PvE challenges. A lot of people that I um, talk to, a lot of newer players are like, I need help with the PvE challenges. How do I beat the PvE challenges? This one PvE challenge is being a huge pain in the ass. Um, most of these decks are extremely effective against PvE challenges um, from the people who have uh, piloted them against PvE challenges. Um, I would love to have taken every single one of these decks and piloted against a PvE challenge, but considering PvE challenges are kind of hard to come by these days, I know um, the devs are going to be implementing them down the road um, to where you can do them a lot more often, but at least at the moment it's only when um, they pop up as a quest. So at any rate, these decks are um, designed to effectively grind games against the AI to complete your quests, to gain fame. And you know they're just kind of designed for newer players um, because that was one of the things that a lot, a lot, a lot of newer players have been asking me for are some um, budget decks. So I decided to collect 15 of them. Yes, this is 15 decks because of how many decks we have. I'm obviously not going to be doing gameplay with all of them, but I have 15 decks to show to you guys. Um, all decks that have been taken from players I know and I respect um, from the Spellweaver forums. Oh, and there'll be a link in the description below to um, this the forum thread that I use to collect these um, decks. More could potentially come down the line. Uh, also, you'll be able to see more of the people who sent in these decks um, and the people what the people say, like do this, do this, mulligan for this, that kind of thing. At any rate, our first deck is kind of a... Um, almost a bit of a um, wisdom corruption control deck. Um, it focuses around the foundry engineers to overwhelm your opponent and it uses cards like Noxious Fume, Splitting Headache, and Mesmerizing Spirit to uh, run your run the opponent out of um, resources. So you're gaining resources, they're losing resources, and all around you're just out advantaging your opponent. Now a lot of these decks, a lot of these budget decks are effective in friendly mode. I wouldn't take them into ranked, but a lot of these decks are effective in friendly games, so if you don't want to play against EAA and you want to play against other players, these decks will you have moderate success. You know, obviously there are people in friendly who are playing the top tier decks, and you might struggle against those, but at any rate. Next we have a, um, a Wisdom Nature kind of burst deck, and what I mean by burst is it can kind of explode out of nowhere and just do a whole mountain of damage, especially with... Um, uh, basic Mieva's um, ability. So, I mean, it's got cards like the Electric Alright, the uh, Elf Warrior, the Hilati Rider, the Jungle Death Trap. All cards that could just kind of be like, alright, well, um, I'm just going to go creature, 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 give them all swift, swing in for a whole bunch of damage. Because if you're going, like, if you're on turns, if you're at 7 mana and you're going Jungle Death Trap, Jungle Death Trap, um, Electric Alright, holy hell, that's 11 damage if you give them all swift. And Jungle Death, Death Trap doesn't die if you play it and get it swift, so, you know, that's four damage coming right the hell out of nowhere. Next, next we have just your basic um, uh, Nature Rage deck. This is a, Nature Rage is a, um, a very, very common, very basic uh, combination of aspects, especially in an aggro deck. Though this one seems to be just a little bit different. It's primarily playing Elves, you know, for the Elf synergy with cards like Grove Guardian and Elf Commander. Uh, it's got its only rares are uh, Fae of Charms, which of course is just a ridiculously good card. And it uses Massive Assault, Boiling Blood to um, accelerate the damage that um, Elves can do. 
um, because they don't really buff each other, they just kind of um, buff themselves. Um, and fireball to help with um, to help kind of pave the road. Next, next we just kind of die. Oh right. Um, next with basic uh, Zash, we've got Black Shaman. And by Black Shaman, what this one does, I played this deck a while back. Um, it focuses primarily around Flamebringer Shaman, who deals damage directly to your opponent for the amount of shamans you have in your graveyard. So what it does is you Infernal Vultures yourself to um, you know fill up your graveyard. You play Flash of Delirium to not only run your opponent out of resources, but um, also to fill up your own graveyard for Flamebringer Shaman. You play Reanimate to bring like your high value creatures like Spirit Walker or Flamebringer Shaman out of the graveyard. So. If, for instance, you could play Flamebringer Shaman, have it die, and then bring it, play Reanimate, bring it back, and deal that damage again. This deck has some moderate success. Like I've said, I've played it in the past. It's really fun, too. This is a just a genuinely um, enjoyable deck. Um, next, um, kind of the opposite of Nature Rage Rush. This one focuses a lot more on the Rage aspect, you know, with the Goblins and the um, Give Goblins Swift. But it also plays some of the support cards in um, nature, like uh, the Elf Scout for uh, speed four, all the, you know, genuine, generally unblockable creature. The pump up from Ambush Strike and the ability to kind of push for lethal with uh, Landslide, being able to get rid of both spells, artifacts, and blocking creatures. So this one is also extremely effective. As I said, the um, Nature Rage is an ex is an effective combo. It's just kind of interesting. One is the um, is heavily in nature, heavy in nature. The other one's heavy in rage. Next, we've got ourselves just your basic rage rush. I mean, it's really nothing special. Um, the only rare in this deck um, is Goblin Looter. It has four of this. This card is really really strong in a deck like this because it's your only card draw. And one of the issues with um, a rush deck is it can you you're emptying your hand so quickly that you can run out of cards. Oh, I'm sorry, there's also Fire Blast in the deck. But you're playing so many, um, you're playing so many cards out, like you're going Lizard Barbarian, then following turn, Goblin Warrior, Lizard Barbarian, that's three cards out of your hand already. You gotta, you play the um, Goblin Looter to draw you more cards. So next, next we have what's actually a top tier deck at the moment, not in this iteration. This one's kind of, um, duh, not dumbed down, but budgeted is the order nature or the order corruption soldiers deck the um uh the synergy between like zombie legionnaire flesh sculptor and master tactician um and restless tombs all centered around soldiers you know spear the steel hull spearmen the heavy infantry the elite vanguard um this turns into a zombie legionnaire when it dies and it's got the undead necromancer to give all your zombie legionnaires deadly which means that they kill anything they uh, damage. So, um, it's kind of this deck in its like top tier form plays a bot one plays more restless tombs and a couple other rares and such. I'm actually going to be doing a spotlight on um, an order corruption soldier deck uh, here soon. Um, but it takes out some of the more exp like the more um, the higher rarity cards and replaces them with cards like. War fanfares and touch of light, um, but this deck is effective. So um, it's a very aggressive. It can be very um, and it can be very good in the late game. The only rares on the deck are two restless tombs and two flesh scu flesh sculptor. Flesh sculptor is a really good card. Whenever a non summoned creature, so everything that's not a token, dies, you um, get a free zombie legionnaire. It's kind of like um, the effect of haunted cemetery. Um, next, we move on to um, Nature Corruption mid-range a little bit. It's really not as it's not as aggressive as the other or, uh, Nature Corruption deck that I showed you, but um, it's got the early game removal like Noxious Fumes and Plague Vermin. It's got kind of the mid-game creatures like the Mesmerizing Spirit, the Venerated Unicorn for the anti-spell um, and artifact. The bedeviled fiend, and it's got card, uh, and it's got the undead hydra as kind of its finisher. Um, you could fit, um, could very easily fit um, uh, dread knights in this deck if you have them. 
Um, but the only rare in this deck is Enchanted Spring, which allows you to bounce your um, Venerated Unicorn, your Mesmerizing Spirit. It allows you to bounce back your Riding Remains to kind of um, dump off all the weakness emblems on it. Uh, next, we have our um, Dominion Wisdom Rush deck. This deck wants to open Spoiled Aristocrat, um, Shadow Step Assassin, followed up with a Contraptionist to put um, Metabolic Overcharger on... Um, like the Spoiled Aristocrat and make it huge. Um, this is a very, very aggressive, very, very um, early game deck. Um, this is a card I haven't really gotten a chance to play much of, Murder Instinct, um, but it can be really good in a deck like this, especially when you need to... Um, um, especially when you really need to like trade... especially if you put it on a card like Swiftblade Assassin that has ranged, because if it has ranged... And it can, um, and it has some deadly. That means it deals its damage to the opponent and instantly kills it, and doesn't take any damage itself. So, um, this is a really strong um, early game deck if that's what you're looking for. So we're on to our last whips. All right. Next we have uh, Dominion. Um, this one is Dominion Wisdom, and it kind of centers around this card, Overwhelming Forces. A look at the top X cards of your deck, where X is the number of creatures the hero who has the most creatures controls. Put any number of creatures from them on the field, and the rest shuffle to the bottom of your deck. So the concept is you take Overwhelming Forces, and you combo it with Foundry Engineers. If Foundry Engineers um, gets rolling, and they pump out, like, I don't know, six golems, and you don't have anything else on board, Foundry Engineer plus six golems is seven cards, which means for five mana, you're looking at the top seven cards of your deck, and you're getting to put any creatures you find from them onto the field. So this is an interesting little um, this is an interesting little combo deck. Um, um, I think it's really, like I said, I think it's really interesting. And uh, the only problem is it does center around Foundry Engineers kind of heavily. I mean, it can still win very easily with early card with early game stuff like Force Mage Protectors trading up really well library guards and winning with the spectral or the gigantic spectral all right it's just if you're going for the the combo is kind of um self-reliant there's not really much digging for it outside of ancient wisdom and library guards with this deck you could um trade out um basic despina for basic daris just for the more card draw to get your um combo pieces more quickly but that's up to personal preference next we have mono um we have Mono Corruption Zombies. This one's um, primarily centered around the zombie synergies like um, like Midnight Feast and um, you know Zombie Legionnaire and Rotting Remains and Infected Survivor and Zombie Giant and even the Zombie Hydra, which is kind of cre uh, scary. <laughs> um, the only rare in this deck is a single copy of um, Sanctum of the Void, and I believe that's it. Yep. So this deck kind of just um, wants to manipulate the board, strip your opponent's hand with Mesmerizing Spirit and Splitting Headache, and leave them unable to deal with um, your Undead Hydra, or your Dread Knight if you happen to have a, um, some Dread Knights you want to put in this deck. Uh, real quick, we're going to skip over to the other Corruption deck and just kind of show the other version, the other Mono Corruption deck I got. This one's a little bit more kind of controlly, kind of um, focusing more on the board manipulation. Uh, it's got your early game removal with stuff like Noxious Fumes and Plague Vermin. Um, it's got the discard engine with the Mesmerizing Spirit. Um, it does play two Restless Tombs and it does play two Blood Witch Harpy. Blood Witch Harpy being a very, very good anti-aggro card. Um, and it just kind of wins off the back of Bedevil Fiend with Reanimates to bring him back. And just all in all overwhelming your opponent with uh, Restless Tombs and maybe even a gigantic Infernal Vulture if you happen to get it. Next we have um, uh, Wisdom Rage Tempo. Now this one is a little heavy in the rares, but as I understand it, as I recall, you get two um, Dragon Daughter and one Ramgek in the Rage Starter. I mean, you can comment, put you know, you can tell me in the comments below if I'm wrong, but I'm almost positive you get at least one of each of these in the starter deck, and I believe you get a Lamp of Zephyr in the Wisdom Starter. I'm not 100% sure about any other like any other copies, but I know you get a Dust Titan in the Wisdom Starter. I don't know if you also get a Lamp of Zephyr. But, so this one's a little heavier in the rares. This is kind of probably um, 
a budget deck more for people who have um, crafting unlocked and can build the extra lamps or the uh, extra dragon daughter. But it's very tempo-y, it's very open with um, Barbarian, Goblin Warrior, um, toss a Force Mage Protector to, you know, keep them alive, follow it up with cards like Gabo and Roni, play the Massive Assault for extra damage, finish them with Dragon Fire or via Dragon Daughter's ability. Um, it's got the anti-aggro, or the anti-artifact um, and spell damage with, or spell with um, Gotten Gnome Power Engineer. It does play the Singleton Foundry Engineer, so if you get that rolling early game, that can carry you to victory very easily. Um, especially if you get it out on turn 2 with the Spark of Initiative. Um, so this is uh, this one is um, another top tier deck that's kind of been budgeted out. Um, there is a Wisdom Rage deck that's doing really well right now. Um, so that's kind of the budgeted version. This one is just Mono Nature. Mono Nature elves with the um, two best rares in nature, the Fey of Charm and the Ancient Trent, which both, if you give the Ancient Trent um, Swift, it can really push your board through for a lot more damage, and so can Fey of Charms, although Fey of Charms doesn't have to be given Swift because she doesn't have to attack, but... So the, uh, the rares are these two cards here, and the deck is... This is the deck that a lot of people are complaining about um, being too strong because the elves are too fast and you can get them out, boom, you know, you can get them out, Grove Guardian, follow it up with two Elf Scout or Grove Guardian, Elf Warrior, Grove Guardian, Elf Warrior, then Brothers in Arms. Brothers in Arms is the only card I'm kind of hesitant about putting in the deck just because they're so easy, it's just so easy to just lose all the value. You play it, you summon another one, but if one dies, the other one dies, and they die to Noxious Fumes to assassinate to a number of cards, so it's just like, yeah, you can play them out for the initial burst in Grove Guardian, but sometimes I just, I'm not 100% sold on this card. But it's still an effective card, and I would still play it in this deck. Uh, the last deck we're going to go into is another Dominion deck, and this is just Mono Dominion kind of um, implant aggro. You know, you start out with the Spoiled Aristocrat, you play the Shadow Step Assassin, or the Gross Experiment. Gross Experiment can fetch any one of the three... Um, implants. You also play the um, the Gnome Surgeon, which is one of the rares in the deck. Um, you play the Gnome Surgeon because it can search an implant and attach it to something. So, you know, this deck is hoping to win very quickly and v um, very aggressively. It's got the Helm of Dominion as one of the rares to steal something, either a blocker or your opponent's big creature. Um, Cathedral of the Night is the last rare. Um, to help you gain life and help you manipulate the board. And, I mean, this deck is probably the most effective um, when it hits its curve. I mean, this deck can be really, really um, hard to stop. I mean, especially if you go turn one, Spoiled Aristocrat, turn two, Gross Experiment, which gets a Metabolic Overcharger. So then all of a sudden you've got a turn one, you've got a three one, turn two, you've got a um, four five, and then if you follow it up with like a gnome surgeon to put an implant on spoiled aristocrat suddenly you're swinging in for like you know 10 damage between these two creatures so i mean this deck can be really bursty but it can also kind of flounder in the early game if you don't draw your curve right but i mean the the ability to just like overrun your opponent in like the first three turns just is too almost too strong so anyway, that's going to do it for me, guys. Um, these are the 15 um, budget decks that I decided to put in this video. There are more in the forum post that I'm going to put in the description below. Um, a number, a couple of them were um, kind of gimmick decks, like, oh, let me just try and make a deck out of nothing but commons. Let me just try and make a deck out of, um, you know, uh, I forget exactly what, there was another one I was going to say, but I can't remember it exactly. Um, a number of the decks that I got were, I think I got like three or four mono, zo mono corruption zombies. So I just kind of went first come, first serve. Um, and I did test them out a little bit, and I kind of picked the ones that um, performed um, most consistently. Um, so there are more decks, and the authors of the decks are in the forum post. You can go ahead and check them in the description below. Um, also, guys, my 7500 gold giveaway is still going on. If you haven't gone to see the video, the video will be in the link in the description below. And as always, guys, may the cards rise to meet you.
and bring good RNG to your enemies. Enemies 